Welcome to another Click Consulting video podcast. My name is Jeff, and thank you for joining our Excel University series. Please grab a copy of the book and download the sample file so you can work along. This video provides the solutions to the data validation exercises. In this exercise, we'll apply data validation to a single cell. If we examine the Meals and Entertainment Amount cell, we'll notice that a user is allowed to enter anything into the cell. We need to restrict the user's input to any decimal between 0 and 75. Select the cell and click Data Validation from the Data ribbon. On the Settings tab, we would like to allow a decimal. Between 0 and 75. Now, the user can enter a valid number like 1, and that's fine. If the user tries to enter an invalid number, Excel will display an error alert dialog. In this exercise, we'll apply data validation to the department input cell. If we examine this cell, we'll notice a user can enter anything. They can even enter a department number that doesn't exist. We'd like to ensure that the user can only enter valid department numbers, so we select data validation. In this case, we'd like to allow a whole number between 100 and 999. We'll define the input message on the input message tab. We'll also customize the error alert. When the cell is selected, Excel displays the input message. If an invalid entry is made, Excel displays the error alert. In this exercise, we'll display an in-cell dropdown using the data validation feature. The Intel drop-down will contain the departments in our department list. Select the cell and then click Data Validation. From the Settings tab, we allow a list. We set the source equal to our department list range. Next, verify that the Intel drop-down contains the proper list of choices. Providing an in-cell drop-down is one of my favorite uses of the data validation feature. In this exercise, the source data is stored on a different worksheet. We need to set up data validation for the client column and the employee column. Highlight the client column and select Data Validation. Allow a list. Set the source equal to the client list found on the support worksheet. The Incel dropdown should contain our list of clients. Next, highlight the employee column and hit Data Validation. Allow a list and set the source field equal to the employee list found on the support sheet. Verify the Incel dropdown contains a valid list of choices. In this exercise, we use data validation along with a named reference. We want the user to specify the month with a drop-down. Let's flip over to the support sheet to view our list of months. Highlight the month range and use the name box to enter the name. We'll use the name months.
Back on the exercise sheet, select the input cell and then data validation. Allow a list and set the source equal to the name months. Verify the drop-down contains the proper list of choices. Setting up a named range with a list of choices on a different sheet is a great way to use data validations in cell drop-down. In this exercise, we'll use a table to store our list of choices. We'll use data validation to set up an in-cell drop-down for the rep list. The list of reps is stored on the support sheet. Convert this ordinary range into a table by selecting Insert Table. Check My Table Has Headers and then click OK. Name the table TBL underscore reps. Next, set up a custom name by using the Name Manager feature. Use the name DD underscore reps and then enter your table name TBL underscore reps. Verify the name DD underscore reps refers to TBL underscore reps. Close the name manager and return to your worksheet. Now that we have a table with a list of choices and a name that refers to that table, we can turn on data validation. Allow a list and set the source equal to your custom name, dd underscore reps. Finally, verify that the incel dropdown contains the proper list of choices. Since we used a table, and tables auto-expand, it's easy to add a new rep to our list of choices. The newly added rep appears in our incel dropdown. In this exercise, we use data validation to restrict entry to valid dates. When filling out a PTO request, the employee starts by entering today's date. Currently, the employee can enter in any PTO date, even if it violates company policy. Let's use the data validation feature to help. We want to allow a date that is less than today's date plus 180. We set up an input message. And customize the error alert. Excel should now allow an entry within 180 days or six months of today's date. An entry out of this range generates the error alert. In this exercise, we'll use a built-in Excel function along with data validation. We want to allow a date that is less than or equal to today's date as computed by the built-in worksheet function today plus 180 days. Specify the input message. and customize the error alert. Entry of a date less than or equal to today's date plus 180 is accepted. A date entry outside of this range generates the error alert. 